Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. We bless you tonight, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, that our prayers come up as incense before you. Lord, they are a sweet savor to you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we know that whatever we ask, according to your will, we have the answer. That it is done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, you've given us such authority to bind on earth and is bound in heaven. To loose on earth and is loosed in heaven. And we thank you for it right now, Lord. For your faithfulness, for your love, for your steadfast commitment to our success in the kingdom of God. And we give you praise for it right now in Jesus' name. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Lord. Give him a hand. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Mike, Suzanne, James. Praise the Lord. James, full of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless James. He's been on a mission this past 24 hours. <laughs> Hallelujah. God has been using him, and that's exciting. Hallelujah. You're a good man, James. Praise the Lord. All right. Praise God. Speaking of incense, why don't we uh, take a prayer request right now? If anybody has a request. Yes, James. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I know. Amen. That's exciting. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Opportunities are all around us, aren't they, James? Amen. Amen. Good thing is you can't be a blessing without getting blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's a win-win. Amen. Amen. God bless you, James. Appreciate you being sensitive to the Lord, and it's exciting for, for God to use you. Yes, Mike. Yeah, I was going to ask if anybody had heard from him. So, yeah, absolutely. So Cindy and Tim and Lee and James's uh, encounters. Anybody else? Tammy? Praise the Lord. And Dan. Yes, remember Dan, too. He's still going through that thing with the boot and all. And Myron? Has anybody heard from Myron? Okay, praise the Lord. All right, let's just uh, see God already knows all these things and he knows the, the, the root of the problem, you know, and uh, a lot of times we end up praying for the superficial because we, that's all we can see, but there's always an underlying issue there that God wants to heal and deliver them from. So let's just speak victory in each one of these situations that God is moving in the perfect way that only the Holy Spirit can move Amen. to minister to the, to the exact need and situation in each of these lives. So, Father, we just release our faith yes. in you and in the finished work of the cross. Yes. Right now, in each of these individuals yes. that were named here tonight, Lord, we believe that the Holy Spirit is moving 
in, at the deepest point of their issue, of their need, yes. of their problem. And we release our faith right now for victory, Lord, in each of those situations, for families to be brought together, to be healed and to be whole. Lord, for, for physical healing to manifest itself in completeness and wholeness, as you have promised us that by your stripes we were healed, Lord. Yes. All of these situations and every circumstance, Lord, we put our trust and our confidence in you because with you, Lord, nothing is impossible. With you, all things are possible, Lord. Nothing, amen, shall be withheld from them who trust in God. Hallelujah. So we just release our faith right now for the mighty hand of God to reach down and touch them at their deepest point of need. In Jesus' mighty name, and we thank you for it right now, Lord. We just feel the, the victory, Lord, in each of these situations, and we celebrate it now in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, our Savior. Praise God. Everybody say amen. 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 Praise God. All right. Thank the Lord. Praise God. Ron, would you, I'm going to swear you out because you are our official uh, offering taker. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I see the anointing. Hallelujah. Come get it. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Ron. Appreciate you, your faithfulness. Amen. And God bless you. Would you please pray for the offering tonight? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God bless you as you give. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I have... Uh, one, uh, one official announcement, and I'll leave the other. Mike's got a thing going, and I'll leave that up to him and the worship team, how they work that out. But uh, in case you haven't heard, Tom Stamps come <laughs> at 12. <laughs> I don't know why I've laughed, except that it was just a really a, one of those deals where I, you know, we schedule it a year in advance, and I mark it on the calendar every month, and I have it marked on the calendar. Of course, I didn't flip it over to May because I wasn't, it was the 30th of and with all the other stuff going on, honestly, I just, it just totally escaped my mind. So, praise the Lord. Uh, it's all on me. Hallelujah. But anyway, he's coming. He'll be here next Friday. I hope, uh, hope you'll come and be a part of it. I know we, you know, I know we're live streaming, so I won't say a whole lot. But we may not see eye to eye on everything doctrinally, okay? But... It's an opportunity for us to sow into something that the Bible tells us we should sow into, and that is taking care of the orphans, feeding the hungry. Uh, Jesus said it himself. He said, uh, I'm a, I, I remember when you came and visited me in prison, when you fed me, when, you, when I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. When I was naked, you clothed me. Uh, all of that. And they said, well, when did, we, when did we do that? And he said, when you did it under the least of these. So... And anybody that's sat here and, and seen the, the brief videos at the end of the services, especially if they're not touched by that, then they're untouchables, I guess, because they, you see these little kids that live in garbage dumps uh, that are, you know, put into uh, prostitution when they're, I mean, eight, nine, ten years old. It's just inconceivable uh, to the, to us, uh, you know, living in this culture, but. Uh, and to see that these kids get an opportunity to be taken out of that and, and reestablish innocence in them and get to know the Lord and, and see that there is a future for them and opportunities and have a safe place to sleep and food on the table and an and a, and a education in Christ. And so it's, it's a good thing. It's a powerful thing that he does. And I'm, I, I have a, the highest respect for that in, uh, regardless of any other inconsistencies that may be. Praise the Lord. He's a great guy. He loves the Lord, and he's doing a great work for God, and it's one opportunity for us to be able to do something that has impact. So that's why we do it, and we'll continue to do it. We only do it once a year, but uh, 
it's a good thing. I believe God honors that, and, and, uh, and it does make a difference in people's lives, and it keeps us committed to the, to the work of the Lord as well. Amen? All right. Praise the Lord. Um, I'd like to, I, I want to just read a bunch of scriptures here to begin with, Mike, so I'm going to wear you out here with a bunch of scriptures, then I'll get into a short uh, Bible study tonight, but I was talking to Mike earlier, and I have probably talked to different ones of you over the last few weeks, but God is doing something in this church. Now you look around, you go, yeah, right. Well, what is he doing, emptying it? Praise the Lord. No, <laughs> it's just Wednesday night up here, so we're, it's all good, but, but really God has a plan. This is the year of Jubilee. Uh, God wants to set us free, and he wants to set a lot of people free, and he needs us to help to do that, and he wants to bring about restoration of everything that has been taken from us. That's part of what happens in the year of Jubilee. The captives are set free. They're restored to all of their uh, properties and all that, you know, everything the enemy comes to take, you get it back sevenfold and so on and so forth. So it's a great time. But more than that, that's the symbolism and so forth. But more than that, God really is doing something in this church. How do I know it? Because there's all kinds of crap going on. Yep. Sorry to say it, but it's a fact. And you know and I know when you start feeling feelings that are not coming from God, it's either the flesh or it's a combination of the enemy and the flesh because that's all he can use. He's got to get you into an attitude or, you know, at odds with somebody or something. That's the surest sign that God is moving. I don't like it to be, but it's just a fact. And any time you've been anywhere where, where there was a move of God, you're going to see opportunities for these kind of things this isn't against anybody okay we're all human beings and we have we have feelings problem is we respond to those feelings too often so I want to I want to sow some words into this atmosphere okay Amen. and then I want us those of us that are here tonight and hopefully the spirit will begin to impress all of us that this needs to be our focus for this year if we're going to move into the things that God wants to do We've got, to, we've got to be in tune with God. How many know God is love? Amen. That's who he is. That's not a feeling that he has. That's who he is, and that's what he is. Now, we are born of God. So our first priority ought to be that we love one another. That's one thing to love the lost, and we should. But if we can't love each other, there's not a whole lot of hope in us getting to anybody beyond us, right? So we really need to put aside our our feelings and our and our sense that we need to side with somebody if you got two somebody's in this church and they're at odds with one another you can't pick a side you got to love them both you got to bring them together praise the lord because there are no sides here we're just we're just one family praise the lord and anybody that's got a family knows families can get messy <laughs> families can get dysfunctional but we love each other you know, we hang in there and we work through things, and that's what we're that's what we're going to have to do. And the, and we're going to be challenged. That's all there is to it. If the enemy can get us to to yield to those kinds of things, he'll he'll have success, and we won't get to see the fulfillment of what God wants to do because God sets it in motion, but He depends on us to operate in the Spirit for those things to manifest in the natural realm. Amen. So let's just I just want to read a bunch of scriptures here sow it into the atmosphere and into our hearts and let's let's remind ourselves every time that feeling hey listen I'm not it's not like I just go around oh, I'm in love I'm in love <laughs> no I got a, I got the same battles everybody else has got praise the Lord so you just have to you have to decide to love you have to make a decision and I have this year and, and Sally tell you I that, that has been one of my main confessions is to operate in love. And that, and I, it, you know, this is something that God's been dealing with me about a long time, amen? Not that I've been hateful or unloving, it's just that I've, I haven't seen the focus there as I think it needs to be. And so I've determined, I'm not letting the enemy drag me off into this stuff. I'm just not going to do it. God, I want God to fulfill his promises to me personally, but to us collectively is important. And in fact, I don't know how that we can have the collective fulfillment without the personal uh, fulfillments of, of each of us. Amen. Amen. So let's read a bunch of scripture here. 
starting with Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6. <clears throat> For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Faith works by love. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 13, same chapter. And 14, Mike. Verses 13 and 14. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. I mean, think about it. We are spirits. I mean, we live in a body, but that's not who we are. We, we, we forget that. And that's where we get into all this other junk, is we forget who we really are. We forget our identity. We are spirits, perfect in Christ. And this is how we live. This is how we operate. This is the fruit of the Spirit. This is the result of, of, of being who we are. Amen? All right, Ephesians chapter 3, verses, uh, verse 17. Ephesians 3, 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye be rooted and grounded in love. I mean, we read these scriptures all the time, but these are fundamental teachings for us to operate in the power of God. We forget it. We, we just think, you know, we're just going to pray the prayer of faith. But he already told us faith works by love. Yeah. If we're not operating in love, it may be one of the reasons why we don't see the completeness of the Spirit's operation in our lives and in the church. Amen? So it needs to be a priority. That's what I'm saying. Amen? And even if it's for selfish reasons, I'm going to love. Hallelujah. I'm going to love for me, praise the Lord, for, for, for what I think God wants to do. Amen? All right, verse 19. And to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you might be full, filled with the fullness of God. That's love that he wants to fill us with. Praise the Lord. All right, uh, chapter 4, verse 2, still in Ephesians. With all holiness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing. Everybody say forbearing. forbearing. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's not a word we like to use a lot, is it? Forbearing one another in love. Praise the Lord. All right, verses 15 and 16, same chapter. And these are just a few. I mean, go to Strong's Concordance and look at love. You'll be there for a while if you want to go through and see everything that God's talking about, right? But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Praise God. Amen. Okay, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Praise the Lord. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. How many of you know sound goes on and on forever? Amen. Praise the Lord. We're not just speaking to the wind here. Hallelujah. We're, we're, we're sowing into this atmosphere. That's what I believe we're doing. Praise the Lord. So if there be any, therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. You will never get into one accord and one mind, which is where we're going to have to be in unity in order for God to do what God wants to do. We can't be in schism. We can't be in 
dysfunction and disjointed thinking that the Holy Spirit, because the spirit I got is the one you got, the one you got, the one you got. We all got the same spirit. So if we're all doing different stuff, it's hard for that one spirit to function. Right. Amen. Unless we come into an agreement. And we can't get into agreement unless we walk in love. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Uh, that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife. Everybody say strife. strife. Don't like it. Praise the Lord. Through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem the other better than themselves. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Colossians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. <clears throat> Excuse me. Colossians 2, verses 1 through 3. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea. And for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that would be us, right? That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love. And unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. The key to all of that is love. Amen. That we love each other. That we stay in love. Praise the Lord. All right. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22. 1 Peter 1, verse 22. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. This is important stuff to God. It needs to be priority for us. Hallelujah. All right, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Still 1 Peter. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and guile and hypocrisies and envies, all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Praise the Lord. Verse 3. If so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Amen. Praise God. Okay, one more. 1 Corinthians 13, and we'll just read that whole chapter, verse 1 through 13. I believe that's the whole chapter. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 13. We always think that, about this as love for husband and wives, but this is love for people. Praise the Lord, just all of us. And look what Paul says. This is why we got it. You know, we need to understand this because sometimes, you know, you, you want to be moved. You want to be uh, used in the spirit. You want to be used in the gifts. And Paul says, if we're not loving each other, anything you're doing in those gifts is just a bunch of noise. It is. It isn't God. Praise the Lord. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, and that word charity is trans translated love, so I'm just going to replace charity with love because that is the actual translation. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I have become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Though I have the gift of prophecy, understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned and I have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffereth long and is kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, seeks not her own, is not easily provoked, <laughs> thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things, love never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Praise the Lord. So how many can see 
It's a priority. It's a priority to God. It has to be a priority to us. We're going to have to discipline ourselves because we live in a world where this isn't the reality. It's far from it. In fact, it's just the opposite of this. So the quickest way to get functioning in love is the moment you feel that, anxi that anger, that anxiety, that, that need to get even, to, to, to be right, to, to win. Let God be your source. Let God be your victory. Let him move. And see if God won't do things that you could never do on your own. And he'll do it in a way that does not cause division, that does not cause strife. I'm, I'm saying all the time, let somebody else be at fault. I mean, if somebody wants to get mad, let them get mad because they want to get mad, not because I'm making them mad. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, sometimes you get into stuff with people and they just got, they're having a bad day. You know, they, they may be having a bad life. And, you know, to try to win the thing doesn't accomplish anything. All you're doing is playing right into their hands. They want to be angry. They want a reason to be angry. And if they can get you angry, then the enemy has won. He's got two people angry, and God can't do anything in the middle of it. So we have to choose to love. I, somewhere in the scripture, and I, don't, I can't quote the, the verse, but chapter and verse, but where it says, it's better to take the wrong. That's something you don't put on your mirror, right? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. But it is something we have to learn to do. Because as long as we're not willing to do that, then God's not going to be our back. He's not going to take our, protect us in those kind of situations. If we're going to, if we're going to uh, win in just in might and in strength, then God says, have at it. But when we're willing to yield and take the wrong, then God will be our reward. God will be our vindicator. Amen. Our, uh, our, our attorney. Praise the Lord. He'll guarantee that we come out as a winner. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So thank the Lord. Amen. Thank you for your patience. Praise God. Now let's get on with uh, a brief message here tonight. And remember, everything functions through this. Yes. So, and I got, I've, uh, you know, I've said before, I, I used to, when Joyce Meyer used to preach love, love, love stuff, just, oh. I, could, I couldn't watch more than about 10 minutes of it, and it just I, I'd feel all itchy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Uncomfortable, you know. I want somebody to come out there and <laughs> turn us loose, you know. And, yeah. <laughs> but that was, I was naive, uh, you know, when it comes right down to it, because all of that power has to be operating in love. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's just power. Otherwise, it, it, get, it can get ugly in a hurry. Amen? That's why when we, we talk about prophecy, whenever you prophesy, you prophesy, it has to be the edification. It has to build up. If it doesn't, if it's cutting people down and making them feel bad and, 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 and see themselves in a bad light, it's not prophetic. Right. Why? Because prophecy, he said, if there's no love, it's just a bunch of noise. Right. It may impress somebody, but it isn't impressing God, and it's not accomplishing anything in the supernatural. Right. Praise the Lord. So, that's where we gotta, we got to function from, whether we're praying for the sick, whether we're casting out demons, where we're, whether we're prophesying or uh, words of knowledge or whatever we're doing. We have to operate in love. Praise the Lord. And God's going to honor that. All right? So let's look at Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 11. So I'm going to talk real quickly here about inheritance in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, yes. being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his will. So I'm just going to kind of work that out a little bit. In whom, he says. And that tells us how we obtain this inheritance. We didn't ask for it. We obtained it because we are in Christ, because we were born again. All right? Now, listen, we've got a, there's a great inheritance. This is a vast inheritance that he's talking about. Amen? It's, it's all things, basically. So, and we have it. 
And we didn't get it because of something we've done or something we're doing or something we're going to do. We got it because we accepted Christ, because we became born again and are now in Christ. And in Christ, we have this inheritance. Amen? It's in him, in whom we have this inheritance. Okay? We have obtained an inheritance. Right? We have obtained. In whom? In Christ now. We have obtained an inheritance. The verb have there denotes that the action has already taken place. We have obtained. We already have it. It's not we're in the process of this or someday out in the future if we are good enough or we get in the right alignment or whatever, it's going to happen. No, we have obtained. Yes. Praise the Lord. We have obtained an inheritance now. Yes. Now, maybe you haven't seen your inheritance. Praise the Lord. But you have obtained it. Praise the Lord. You do have it. It's legally yours, and you're qualified to use it. Praise God. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Because we're children of God. That's the only reason. We are his children. We have this tremendous inheritance that our Father left to us, willed to us. Amen? None of the inheritance is going to be left unclaimed. Right. Praise the Lord. God won't let any of it be wasted. Amen. He'll see to it that the children who are willing to receive it Experience it. I want my inheritance. Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't want somebody else getting my portion, praise the Lord, because I was unwilling to receive it or unwilling to act on the reality of my having obtained it. Praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Giving thanks to the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Made us meet or uh, the better translation would be made us qualified. Mm. Praise the Lord. Giving thanks to the Father which hath made us qualified to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Praise the Lord. We didn't qualify ourselves for this inheritance. God qualified us through Christ. Amen. We were buried with Christ. We were crucified with Christ. We rose again with Christ. He's inherited. We inherit. We are joint heirs. Because we are in Christ. He qualified us for this inheritance. And he says we're to give thanks, right? If you go back to Ephesians, but you don't have to, Mike. He, he says we're to give thanks to our Father because he's the one who qualified us to share and to participate in this inheritance. Giving thanks. He said we give thanks to God because he qualified us and then gave us the inheritance. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for putting me in the family so I would have an inheritance. Yep. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is our inheritance. All right, Romans chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. See, just, just being his kid makes us qualified. And he made us his kid. Yep. Praise God. It's a good deal. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Amen. Being God's child is the only qualification. The only thing that we have to have or be in order to be an heir and Christ's joint heir is to be a child of God, and God has done that. We were born from above. We were born of God. Amen. God qualified us for the inheritance by birthing us into his family. You know, it's not the servants in the field, you're looking at the Old Testament, who are heirs, but it's the children in the house. Now, look at this. Look at Luke. We all know this. So we're not going to read the whole thing, but Luke chapter 15, verses 20 through 31. This is the prodigal son. And I just want to show you uh, an example of this, this reality, okay? Because here's what happens. Religion and even our own 
uh, natural way of thinking and with the help of the enemy causes us to feel, well, I, ha I know I have this inheritance, but it's out there and eventually I'll, I'll arrive there. I'll, I'll do enough good stuff or I'll, I'll, be, I'll pray enough or I'll be spiritual enough that, that I'll actually receive my inheritance. He says we've already obtained it. So there's a lot of people out working in the field when they ought to be sitting in the house enjoying the inheritance. Amen? Amen. So he says, he rose and came to his father. This is the prodigal. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe, put it on him, put a ring on his hand, shoes on his feet. Bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. He's, he's still in the family. He still has an inheritance. Amen. For this my son was dead and is alive again, and he was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. His elder son was in the field. Yeah. He was working. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he has received him safe and sound. He's in the house, partying, enjoying the inheritance. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out, and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, and hath killed for him the fatted, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is yours. You didn't have to be out there working to get your inheritance. But because you worked, you're, you, you feel like you deserve more than he does. Or that it's through your work that you get the inheritance. He said, it was here all the time. You could have enjoyed it any time you wanted to. You didn't have to. There wasn't any more work for you to do to get the inheritance. You were already an inheritor because you're my son. Praise the Lord. Okay, does that make sense? Yep. All right, some people are like that older brother. Out there working in the field. Self-effort. Trying to be better. Trying to be more religious. In order to get an inheritance that rightfully belongs to them simply because they're God's child. It's ours right now. Don't let the, you see, the devil's got us putting it off, always in the future. It's going to be, you know, next, you know, pray, breakthrough, next, uh, you know, uh, victory that I get, you know, over some sin in my life or some falling short or coming, you know, up uh, uh, short of the, the, the perfection that I want for my life. No. Right now, with all of your flaws, as the younger son found, with all of the mess, amen, God wants to give it to you. He's running after us to give it. In fact, the scripture t talks about his blessings overtaking us, mm -hmm. chasing us down. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. All right, look, at the, look again. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 4. To show you another little perspective, but this is how God sees it as well. Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. 15. Yes, Genesis 15, verses 1 through 4. This is Abraham, and now... Abraham has, uh, you know, come back after overcoming the, the different kings and, of Sodom and so forth. And, and he gives his offering to Melchizedek and he won't take anything from the, these kings. And then God says, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Mm -hmm. Now, Abram says, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is an heir. In other words, Eliezer is going to be my heir. He's going to be the one that gets my stuff, because I don't have any family. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. That is us, folks. Amen. We came out of God. And God's saying, I'm not giving it to servants. I'm not giving this. And in fact, in Scripture, it talks about the wealth of the wicked is stored up. Amen for the righteous. Amen. God has got reward for us. God has got uh, inheritance for us. And it's simply because we are the promised children. We are the children of promise. If thou canst believe, right? Amen. If you'll believe in your heart and confess in your mouth, you get born again. You become a child of God. Now you've got an inheritance. Praise God. 
Amen. God didn't let Abram give the family inheritance that belonged to the birth child to a servant. Praise God. It's ours. It belongs to us. All right, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. Got just a few scriptures here we'll look at, and then I'll wrap it up. Ephesians 1, verse 11, again, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Now look at this, because it's, it's, it's interesting the way he puts, puts this in here. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of of his own will. When Jesus was born again, he was made the heir of God, right? So were we. And we were in him before the foundation of the world. So in that sense, we were predestinated to become heirs by whom we are heirs in in Christ. All right, look at uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 32. He says, worketh all things together after the counsel of his own will. Romans 8, verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely also freely give us all things? That's, that's an inheritance. That's almost unspeakable. Right? All things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God, do, God doesn't skimp. He's not, you know, cheap. He's, as somebody said, he's El Shaddai. He's not El Cheapo or whatever. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He's got all things, and he says, you are an heir of all things. Having given you Jesus, he has given you all things. Praise the Lord. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 21 through 23. 1 Corinthians 3, 21 through 23. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. All things are yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. Oh, man, I mean, how do you even get your head around that? But that's what he's telling us. This is big stuff, amen? All things are yours, and you are Christ, and Christ is God's. Praise the Lord. I got goosebumps. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. 1 Timothy 6, verse 17. 1 Timothy 6, 17. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. It's where he also says things like uh, the Lord uh, blesses you uh, amen, to, so that you will become rich without any sorrow added, without any issue. I mean, look at, I was just thinking today, you know, I was listening, I was sitting on the deck, I'd been cutting a bunch of trees and some, uh, whatever it is, what is it, Sally? Sumac. And uh, thank you, I just cut it, I don't know what it is. She just points at it. Anyway, so I'm cutting this stuff out and throwing it on a burn pile. And I went up and sat on the deck, and I, had, I turned the radio on on the deck there, and, and it was uh, uh, Michael Jackson, I think it was. <laughs> I have a lot of his CDs, praise the Lord. No, I don't. It was just on the, it was on the radio. <laughs> but uh, he's dead, OD. Money, 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 money. I mean, the guy had plenty of money. Uh, Prince just recently... Uh, you know, made millions and millions of dollars, ODs on drugs. Rich, but not with all things. And rich, but not without sorrow. And you can look at many, many, many uh, wealthy people. If they don't have God, they got money, but they're not happy. They're sorrowing with all of their wealth. Praise the Lord. God wants to give us great wealth and happiness to go with it and joy. All things. Amen. All right, one more. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Look at this one. This is is great. 2 Peter 
chapter 1, verse 3. Last scripture. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and to godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Man, we need to get this down inside of us. We need to be telling, reminding ourselves of this every single day. All things belong to us. Everything that pertains to life and godliness. Amen. That's, that's joy. That's, that's life. Hallelujah. It's, it's not just living or eking out an existence. It's life, abundant life that he came to give us. Praise the Lord. These all things, they are manifested through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue, right? Mm -hmm. We've been robbed, guys. Yep. By misunderstanding and misinterpreting God's word and allowing the enemy to come in. Listen here, this is Jubilee year, right? Yep. We got all things coming. Yes. He's robbed us of a lot of things mm -hmm. and we've got all things coming. Yes. I'm believing that this is the year that we start to walk in the all things that God has for us. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's time to make up for it. Yes. Start enjoying our inheritance now. Not, yes. not years down the road, not in heaven, not after this is over, but right here and right now. Let's enjoy the inheritance of all things. Let's begin to experience not only the wealth of the kingdom and the power of the kingdom, but the joy of the kingdom, the yes. fullness of, of joy, the, the, the peace that passes understanding. Uh -huh. Amen. The oneness that he wants us to have with one another. Hallelujah. All things are yours because of the inheritance that you have in Christ. Give him a praise for it right now. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. God bless you all. Let's walk in love and get our inheritance. Praise the Lord. Get it out there on the street where we can use it and see it. Praise God. We have obtained it. Let's live in it. Praise God. God bless all of you. Appreciate you tonight. Have a great rest of the week. Hope we'll see you back here Sunday in Jesus' name. Those of you who are not going to be here, the Lord bless you and give you a winner. Now you know what I'm talking about. Because all things are yours, Michael. Praise God. God bless you all. See you all Sunday.